Hello everyone, happy Thursday. Um, today we are going to be reading chapters 15 and 16 of Because of Winn-Dixie. Um, we just learned so much about Mrs. Gloria Dump. We learned so much about Otis and hopefully we are going to learn more about some of the people in um, Opal's town. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. Chapter 15. The Herman W. Block Memorial Library's air conditioning unit didn't work very good, and there was only one fan. And from the minute me and Winn-Dixie got in the library, he hogged it all. He lay right in front of it and wagged his tail, and he let it, and let it blow his fur all around. Some of his her fur was pretty loose, and he, excuse me, some of his fur was pretty loose and blew right off him like a dandelion puff. I worried about him hogging the fan, and I worried about the fan blowing him bald. But Miss Franey said not to worry about either thing. That when Dixie could hog the fan if he wanted, and she had never in her life seen a dog made bald by a fan. Sometimes when Miss Franey was telling a story, she would have a fit. There were small fits. They didn't last very long. But what happened when she would forget what she was but what happened was she would forget what she was saying. She would stop and start to shake like a little leaf. And when it happened, when Dixie would get up from the fan and sit right at Miss Franny Block's side, he would sit up tall, protecting her, with his ears standing straight up on his head like soldiers. And when Miss Franny stopped shaking and started talking again, when Dixie would lick her hand and lie back down in front of the fan. Whenever Miss Franny had one of her fits, it reminded me of Win Dixie in a thunderstorm. There were a lot of thunderstorms that summer, and I got real good at holding on to Win Dixie whenever they came. I held on to him and comforted him and whispered to him and rocked him, just the way he tried to comfort Miss Franny when she had her fits. Only I held on to Win Dixie for another reason, too. I held on to him tight so he wouldn't run away. It all made me think about Gloria Dump. I wondered who comforted her when she heard those bottles knocking together, those ghosts chattering about the things that she had done wrong. I wanted to comfort Gloria Dump, and then I decided the best way to do that would be to read her a book. I read, excuse me, read it to her loud enough to keep the ghosts away. And so I asked Miss Franny, I said, Miss Franny, I've got a grown up friend whose eyes are going on her, and I would like to read her a book out loud. Do you have any suggestions? Suggestions, said Miss Franny. Yes, ma'am, I have suggestions. Of course I have suggestions. How about David Copperfield? Who is he, I asked her. David Copperfield is the title of the book, Opal, said Miss Franny. Oh, well, what's it about? It's about a boy growing up. It's been a tradition in my family to read the book aloud. My great grandfather, Litmus, read the book to my grandfather every year. And when my father was an old man, I read it out loud, uh, excuse me, I read it aloud to him. It sure must be a good book. Why? That book mattered so much to Litmus that he even took a copy of, excuse me, that he even took a copy of it with him when he went off to fight in the Civil War. He was just a boy, you know. Litmus was your great grandfather? Yes, ma'am. Let Miss W. Block. Now there's a story. When Dixie yawned real big and lay down on the side, on his side with a thump and a sigh. <clears throat> I swear the new phrase, I swear he knew that phrase, now there's a story. And he knew that it meant we weren't going anywhere real soon. Go ahead and tell it to me, Miss Franny, I said. And I sat down cross-legged next to Win Dixie. I pushed him and tried to get him to share the fan, but he pretended he was asleep, and then he wouldn't move. It was all settled. I was all settled in and ready for a good story when the door banged and pinch-faced Amanda Wilkinson came in. When Dixie sat up and stared at her, he tried out a smile on her, but she didn't smile back, so he lay down again. I'm ready for another book, Amanda said, slamming her book down on Miss Franny's desks. At desk. Well, said Miss Franny, maybe you wouldn't mind waiting. I'm telling India Opal a story about my great-grandfather. You are, of course, more than welcome to listen. 
It'll be just one minute. Amanda sighed, and a san Amanda sighed a real big dramatic sigh and stared past me. She pretended like she wasn't interested, but she was. I could tell. Come sit over here, said Miss Franny. I'll stand, thank you. Suit yourself, Miss Franny shrugged. Shrugged. Now, where why where was I? Oh yes, Litmus. Litmus W Block. All right. Now, in chapter 16, we are going to be reading about the story um, of Litmus, W. Block. Um, Miss Franny does use uh, a word in this chapter that um, shows her feelings towards, you know, the war and, and how much agony and pain she felt towards the war. Um, it's just important that you don't repeat this word. And, uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Chapter 16. Litmus W. Block was just a boy when the firing on Fort Sumter occurred, Miss Franny said, Block said, as she started in on her story. Fort Sumter, I said. It was the firing on Fort Sumter that started the war, said Amanda. Okay, I said. I shrugged. Well, Litmus was 14 years old. He was strong and big, but he was still just a boy. His daddy, Artley W. Block, had already enlisted and Litmus told his mama that he could not stand by and let the South get beat. So he went to fight too. Miss Franny looked around the library and then she whispered, Men and boys always want to fight. They are always looking for a reason to go to war. It is the saddest thing. And they have this abiding notion that war is fun. And no history lesson will convince them differently. Anyway, Litmus went and enlisted. He lied about his age. Yes, ma'am. Like I said, he was a big boy. And the army took him, and Litmus went off to war just like that. L left behind his mother and three sisters. He went off to be a hero, but he soon found out the truth. Miss Franny closed her eyes and shook her head. You can tell when she closes her eyes and shakes her head that she is just, she's just in pain. She feels so bad. She... You know, she she has she feels a certain way about war. What truth? I asked her. Why that war is hell, Miss Franny said with her eyes still closed. Pure hell. Hell is a cuss word, said Amanda. I stole a look at her. Her face was pinched up even more than usual. War, said Miss Franny, with her eyes still closed. Should be a cuss word too. So she shook her head and opened her eyes. She pointed at me. Then she pointed at Amanda. You, neither of you can imagine. No ma'am, Amanda and me said ex at exactly the same time. We looked real quick at each other and then back at Miss Franny. You cannot imagine. Litmus was hungry all the time and he was covered with all manner of vermin, fleas and lice. And in the winter, he was so cold that he thought for sure he would freeze to death. And in the summer, well, there's nothing worse than war in the summertime. It stinks so. And the only thing that made Litmus forget that he was hungry and itchy and hot or cold was that he was getting shot at. And he got shot at quite a bit. And he was nothing more than a child. Did he get killed? I asked Miss Franny. Good grief, said Amanda. She rolled her eyes. Now, Opal, Miss Franny said, I wouldn't be standing in this room telling you the story if he was killed. I wouldn't exist. No, ma'am. He had to live, but he was a changed man. Yes, ma'am, a changed man. He walked back home when the war was over. He walked from Virginia all the way back to Georgia. He didn't have a horse. Nobody had a horse except for the Yankees. He walked, and when he got home, there was no home there. Where was it? I asked her. I didn't care if Amanda thought I was stupid. I wanted to know. Why, Miss Franny shouted so loud that when Dixie and Amanda Wilkinson and me all jumped, the Yankees burned it. Yes, ma'am, burned it to the ground. What about his sisters? Amanda asked. She moved around the desk and came and sat on the floor. She looked up at Miss Franny. What happened to them? Ooh, this is getting deep. So I want you to make a prediction about what you think happened to them. Do you think they got out safe? Do you think the Yankees got to them? What do you think happened? 
What happened to them? Dead. Dead of typhoid fever. So it's like a disease that went around at the time. Oh no, said Amanda in a real soft voice. And his mama, I whispered, dead too. And his father, Amanda asked, what happened to him? He died on the battlefield. Limus was an orphan, I asked. Yes, ma'am, said Miss Franny Block. Litmus was an orphan. This is a sad story, I told Miss Franny. It sure is, said Amanda. I was amazed that she agreed. She was agreeing with me about something. I'm not done yet, Miss Franny said. When Dixie started to snore, and I nudged him with my foot to try to make him quit, I wanted to hear the rest of the story. It was important to me to hear how Litmus survived after losing everything he loved. All righty. So, huh. This was two heavy chapters. Um, we are learning a lot about Miss Franny Block's life and how she came to be. Um, we learn about her great-grandfather, Litmus, who went to war and um, whose family was had all passed away when he came back from war. Um, and we are not finished with the story, but you'll have to wait until tomorrow to hear the rest of Miss Franny Block's story. So go ahead and work on your assignment today, and tomorrow you will hear more about her story. Have a good day, guys. Bye.